Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers YouTube show where you can see Andy Holloway humiliated at the end of this episode. Make sure you skip ahead and watch him be an idiot. Subscribe! Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Friday, September 29th, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome one and all. More matchups today. The Fantasy Face-Off. Hmm. Delightful. Yes, yes. He wants to take his face <laughs> off. <laughs> uh, no, it, it'll be good. I, I've missed it. You've missed the uh, wheel. dressing up? I've missed the wheel. Yeah. Mike is just sitting in second place every week. It's great, second boys. Place. That's he doesn't, <laughs> you know, first couple weeks, I got a dub. Jason flipped the script on me this week. He gets the dub. I mean. And Mike's just, you First know, the worst. Second the best. Guys, second place is delightful. You don't have to do anything. <laughs> that is correct. <laughs> um, Man, yeah, welcome in. We have a lot to talk about, a Thursday night game to react to. Uh, we'll go exclusive 10 minutes to Al Borland today on the uh, reaction to the Thursday night game and just let him talk and talk and talk about that matchup. You excited about that, Al? <laughs> that sounds like as big of a nightmare as the game was. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, fair enough. Uh, but we're happy to have you with us. Twitter was what it always is, a binary reaction. Of rational, <laughs> level-headed discussion. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, whatever <laughs> Twitter feels in the moment is the eternal perspective on whatever's going on. Uh, but, yeah, there was a lot of reaction to the game. I mean, the uh, the Lions, they came out and, and they stomped the Packers. Yeah, it, yes. And it was, even, it, it was even more impressive because the game began with a Jared Goff interception. In Lambeau, so the momentum was certainly on the side of the Packers to begin that game, and they just they squashed the Packers. I mean, the, the pass rush destroyed the offensive line. There was not a running game for Green Bay. I mean, five carries for Jones and Dillon. Yeah, it's, it's 27 total yards rushing. Very difficult to run on the Lions, and uh, when you get down to boot, then you got to throw the ball. It, it, it uh, didn't work out. The nice thing is I think a lot of – fantasy managers you didn't play AJ Dillon because Aaron Jones was active and Aaron Jones in a bad matchup just back from injury I think a lot of people uh benched Aaron Jones as well so possible the Jordan Love had a nine yard touchdown run and he ended with negative two rushing yards <laughs> that's impressive the the two targets for Aaron Jones was that was the the real boggling thing of the uses we knew we knew we snap knew. count was a possibility yeah yeah it, but even even still with that, I don't, I don't know what the snap counts are currently. I don't know if we have that information. But it still is is bizarre to only give Aaron Jones two targets in a game that you are losing bad the whole time. The The main storyline of this game was the fact that the Detroit Lions went full Monty. Mm -hmm. Yep. And uh, 32 carries was a career high for David Montgomery. <laughs> well, I mean, when you're fresh off an injury... So 32 carries, 121 yards, three touchdowns, doing his best Jamal Williams impression from last year, and was fully dominant. I mean, this was not 32 carries of inefficiency. This was uh, slicing, dicing, and destroying the defensive line for the Green Bay Packers, or rather following a great offensive line. The storyline with David Montgomery's career thus far has been producing as much as he possibly can behind a really bad Chicago offensive line, you're seeing what he's capable of behind a line that kind of imposes its will. Yeah, I mean, David Montgomery is a better player than Jamal Williams. Just straight up, those two, if they're next to each other, you would draft, you know, for your backyard team uh, off the fence, you'd say, give me David um, uh, on my team. And so Dave. now, d right, if it's you're a really close. It's a backyard. Yeah, Dave, yeah. Hey, Dave, come on yeah. over. Uh, sorry, Jamal. But uh, now he's he's in that role. He's going to succeed in that role. And shout out to my co-manager in uh, Listener League, 
I didn't even re- – too many leagues. I didn't realize he was on the bench. He's active. Oh, no. And so he's like, he put him in over Brandon Cooks. Nice. Very well done. And you didn't know until the game was going? No, no, no. He texted me. I oh, was okay. like, hey, we should do this. I was like, yes, we should. Jameer Gibbs with uh, 12 touches in this game, 8 for 40 on the ground. He caught four passes uh, on the year. Jameer Gibbs has 18 targets in the passing game to David Montgomery's three. But this was not um, – you know, there. This is an interesting discussion because the lack of utilization of Jameer Gibbs is disappointing, without question. It's not what I expected to begin the year. Uh, he obviously had the bigger touch week last week with David Montgomery on the shelf, but it's it's succeeding for the Lions. Like the game plan, not seeing Montgomery in preseason. Clearly, this is a one A David Montgomery, and then Jameer Gibbs is fitting into this role 2B. now. 2B. Yeah, 1A, 2B. <laughs> Jameer Gibbs is uh, oh, on the edge of RB2, most likely in the flex type of consideration moving forward. And and you are hoping, you know, last night was the perfect recipe for David Montgomery. Positive game script from the jump. Efficient running game. Didn't need the passing game in the second half. I mean, if you had Amon Ra, thank goodness you got that first touchdown because the you know, the targets for Amon Ra and Sam Laporta, who both had a great first half, were basically non existent in the second half. Yeah, it's But let's get let's have some totality of perspective on Gibbs. Sure. The I was gonna ask the question, do do we now view we're four weeks in, do you have to look at Jameer Gibbs and try to think about the game script? Think about is, yes. is this a game that the Detroit Lions will struggle uh against a, a superior team and that's not saying the Lions are bad just saying like like the Lions or a were, competitive team. Or, yeah or a competitive team where they actually have to throw the ball a whole bunch more because Goff only threw the ball 28 times it's uh if you, it is disheartening to have to see 34 points for the Detroit Lions and Jared Goff had a subpar fantasy it was a bad day. fantasy day for Goff yeah I mean the the issue might become that if you are saying, you know, you got to take into account the matchup. Prior to this game, you would have said this is going to be a competitive game. A divisional in Lambeau, this this is the type of game. that Towards the end of the game, they're going to need to throw. They're going to need the most out of their most efficient player. Problem is, the Lions might be really, really good. And if they're <laughs> really, really good and they start, uh, you know, imposing their will with their awesome offensive line, it could spell bad news. I mean, you look at last season, right? They had DeAndre Swift and they had Jamal Williams. And Jamal Williams was the better fantasy asset all year long even when Swift was healthy which looking at the Lions upcoming schedule if 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 they are truly that good and Gibbs is going to have to rely a little bit on game script you buckle up because it's gonna be rough here we got next week we got the Panthers at home for the Lions then it's on the road against the Buccaneers that's two matchups that the Lions should be fantastic then you get the Ravens but then you get the Raiders. There, so that, well, and it's that's rough, man. We spent almost all of yesterday throwing out scenarios with bottom of the barrel running backs. Jameer Gibbs is start worthy in the flex position. Yes. in most weeks. But every, you're talking every week. but upside. Yeah, almost every week. And I, I think you know he has a scored in four weeks. Ian Harditz had a, a a good perspective post that came out yesterday talking about you know through the first four weeks, rookie first round running back since 2014. Touches-wise, Jameer Gibbs is tied with Christian McCaffrey through four weeks. When McCaffrey arrived in Carolina, they had an incumbent, right? It was Jonathan Stewart, and we saw almost the identical type of utilization in that scenario. It is not what fantasy managers or myself hoped for, but it is a long season, and he is a very talented player. He is a more talented player than Kenny Gainwell in a timeshare. He is a more talented player than a lot of timeshare running backs. You know, I'd rather have Jameer Gibbs than Jalen Warren, okay, or, or Kenny Gainwell, or any, yeah, you know, probably absolutely. even more than Damian Pierce. Yeah, I think over it, the remainder of the season, and he was the RB twenty going into this game. Yeah, he hasn't been bad. He just has been disappointing for what the hopes were. But again, where he was drafted in fantasy drafts, first month of the season. It, it, Mike said it really well uh, yesterday. Actually, I think it was on our Footcast recording. Um, when we were talking about Jonathan Taylor, and it's just you got to keep in mind, it is a long season. Everything feels like what happens the first month 
That's what's going to happen the rest of the way. It never is like that unless you're Christian McCaffrey. And then it's just every week, yeah, it's, it's great. It is like that for him. Uh, Romeo Dobbs, another big fantasy day. It didn't look like, you know, if you streamed Jordan Love or you played Romeo Dobbs the first half of that game, you were like, well, <laughs> week five, everybody. <laughs> But uh, garbage time is a spectacular thing. I mean, they've had to mount comebacks in multiple weeks now. And, uh, you know, it kind of it worked out. Uh, Jordan Love wasn't spectacular, quite the opposite. But he did end up with two touchdowns in the game. Uh, any other players or storylines that you yeah. want to talk about in this I one? I mean, just the, the, the Romeo Dobbs. I know they were – it was mounting a comeback in the second half, but 13 targets after a – uh, last week we had a, d a double-digit target performance as well. That's that seems like great news for Dobbs, Christian Watson. If you took the the risk, you at least got twenty-five and a touchdown. That's that certainly could have gone um, a lot worse. But and then uh, Laporta, man, he's such a good player. He he's is. So good. He looks fantastic. It was again for every every Detroit pass catcher, the game script was so unfortunate because Goff. And the Lions were playing very, very well, but they didn't need to throw the ball. Yep. Sam Laporta, over 50 yards again. Looks the part. Got a text from Al Borland saying, I should have traded Waller for uh, Laporta after he watched a couple of those highlights. But <laughs> um, all right. It is Friday. Put Clan Friday. Today's winner of a $100 gift card to FantasyChamps.com is Foot Clan supporter Abel D. Abel, congratulations. You will be able to rede oh. redeem that uh, very soon <laughs> at FantasyChamps.com. Let's talk news. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. There was a report this morning, it comes from ESPN, Stephen Holder, saying Jonathan Taylor appears ready to return from the PUP. He's eligible after this week. Oh, man, here we go. It did put the fear of God in me uh, with we... regards to Zach Moss's uh, spot on my roster. I have no Moss and no Taylor anywhere, so I get to sit You're back. You're just sitting in the audience? Yeah. Yep, I get, to, I get to eat my popcorn and see what happens. Broncos wide receiver Jerry Judy remained limited on Thursday with a knee injury. Rashad Bateman, Odell Beckham Jr., Old Dell Beckham oh, Jr., oh, missed practice again on Thursday because wide receivers are not something that the Ravens like to have. Well, to be fair, they don't like to have running backs either. Yeah, that's true. Gus Edwards, he did practice in full, dealing with the concussion. Justice Hill... Return to a limited practice, so Thank now you, God. you might have both players back <laughs> so, against Cleveland. So many people need Justice Hill. I don't know if this, if this week's going to be the ride you want, but uh, it, no, it, it doesn't matter. We need we need his opportunities. Yeah, I mean uh, that's true. Anthony Richardson practice in full should be back. Big names from the matchups coming up later today. DK Metcalf held out a practice on Thursday. Jimmy Garoppolo limited. Devontae Smith didn't practice due to illness. And then uh, we did get some early practice reports this morning. Deshaun Watson uh, spent time with the trainer this morning. We don't have any more information than that. Sore shoulder all week long, so we'll see how he is doing. Miles Sanders was limited the last two days with a mm. groin. That's does not, not have good. A, does not have a helmet on. Uh, that is not good considering that that was the same – issue he was yeah. held out of the preseason and some training camp for he had a groin issue so if it's uh a re-aggravation man you might uh might be wanting to, uh, everyone that is uh, running back thirsty might want to go to their waivers right now yeah. and look uh for chuba hubbard that's a good point yeah chuba would be a good start it, you get more work in total than miles and, has and chuba has chuba's looked good this year he he really has shout out to chuba yeah that was today's news and notes. They play Minnesota, right? That is, that is correct. Yep. That was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. Fantasy forecast. Well, let's start with that matchup. The Minnesota Vikings at 0-3 take on the Carolina Panthers at 0-3. I saw some stats this morning. 
Kirk Cousins start to this season, passing for over a thousand yards, over nine touchdowns, um, the completion percentage. His performance has been uh, historical. There are only nine other quarterbacks that have ever had that type of a start to a season in terms of the yardage and the touchdowns. None of the other nine have started worse than two and one on those seasons. <laughs> and um, I was going to highlight. I'll. I'm a the Vikings are my second team. I know the Vikings fan base. The 0 and three, it's Kirk Cousins' fault. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he is on pace right now for six thousand and ninety one yards and fifty. He's not winning games, Jason. And fifty one passing touchdowns. Not good enough. <laughs> well, he does get a chance to go on the road and play the winless Carolina Panthers. The DraftKings Sportsbook line has Minnesota as four and a half point road favorites. The over under is forty six and a half, and uh, you know I think they're going to be able to get it done. It's time to break through. Bryce Young, been practicing, is expected to take over at quarterback. We saw the illustrious Andy Dalton. He was set up for some success in this matchup, but we should get Bryce Young, and I think Bryce Young will get better as the season goes yeah. on. Uh, Kirk oh. Cousins, like I said, he's been a must start, and you continue to put him in your lineup this week. Although the Panthers' defense, I've been impressed with it over the course of the year, making their 0-3 start all the more frustrating for Panther fans, I'm sure. Yep. Miles Sanders, we just talked about it. If he's out, Chuba Hubbard is in. The Minnesota defense has been pretty good against the run, mostly because it allows teams to pass on it. Mm -hmm. But Chuba can catch the ball. Adam Thielen's my start of the week on the Carolina side at wide receiver. Uh, DJ Chark and John. And that is, that is with Bryce Young, right? Yeah, That's I'm, not... I'm totally fine with, with Bryce Young. He had a good week the week before. DJ Chark had yeah. 11 targets. But what is the status of that hamstring? Because that is it unfortunate. Was, it honestly, it, it doesn't even uh, change my thinking on it. it. If Bryce Young is the quarterback, I'm not putting DJ Chark out there. Yeah, the 11 targets were in the Andy Dalton game, and you would expect those to, to be better. So I would agree with you. With the combination of the hamstring, limited Thursday with the hamstring issue, and Bryce Young expected to play, I don't think you need to be looking DJ Chark's way. There are plenty of other options. I had just the the hottest DraftKings lineup with Andy Dalton and DJ Chark. Oh, really? Yeah, because the, with those two guys, you could play every superstar <laughs> on the salary. It, and, I had, and it got blowed up. I had DJ Chark in my lineup as well, and it is a disheartening <laughs> reality when you yeah. when you look at had the, to scrap that. When you got the hamstring plus the Bryce Young situation yep. and the lack of kind of being able to throw the ball deep, it's concerning. On the other side, yes. wheels up, Justin Jefferson, Jordan Addison. We need more. TJ Hawkinson. We're going to see Cam Akers debut? We should see Cam Akers debut. So the question is, I, I do not think anyone is even questioning, can I start Cam? You you don't start Cam Akers, even though it's a plus matchup so far on this season. Um, you just don't know what the workload's going to be. Yeah, the question is, what does it do to Alexander Madison? And can you start him? Alexander Madison was Alexander the Great last week. Had a fantastic game despite fumbling after every play was over. Yes. Uh, I mean, that's the best most part. people it's just Alexander, drop the ball. He Alexander fumbles. mad at him Ooh, because yeah, yeah. the team is mad at him they, on every carry, but he was productive. The The team did issue – or the coach gave the warning that went out and the public got it too of people better stop fumbling or you're going to hit the bench. And, mm. it, it, and, I mean, it feels very directed at Madison, but it's also not – it's not just him. Like this whole team has a fumbling problem. Uh, but the, are the, you playing the, Madison? I am. the The matchup. Look, the Panthers run defense. Thirty second in expected points per rush attempt. Twenty ninth in fantasy points allowed to the running back position. Until it, it it certainly comes with risk of maybe this team really really loves Cam Akers and they're already ready to make that switch. But with last week's performance, moving into this one with a little bit of momentum, I'm playing Madison as a, as a running back, too. The Pittsburgh Steelers are 2-1, and one and they take on the 1-2 and two Houston Texans in Houston. The DraftKings Sportsbook line, Pittsburgh minus just 2.5. The over-under is 42.5. Houston was great last week. Pittsburgh's starting to get it going a little bit. Um, the offensive line in Houston still decimated. I saw Laramie Tunzel not going to be back out there. It did give me the... Small hope that when that offensive line gets P 
pieced back together a little bit, yeah. we could have a brighter future for Damian Pierce because the offense has been able to move the football with C.J. Stroud, Tank Dell, Nico Collins. I think we've all been impressed with those three players in mm -hmm. this offense. We haven't been impressed with Pierce because the, the offensive line has been so just damaged. Like a fully healthy Houston offensive line wasn't going to be um, top tier, but Damian Pierce right now, if you're in the running back landscape, you're probably playing him this week. Yeah, I mean, you might have to, but let me put it I, a I different would, way. I'm be, playing Damian Pierce this week. Would you? What if you just scooped up A Chan? Oh, I would play A Chan over Damian Pierce for sure. Andy, I I don't think that there is. I can't make the path for Damian Pierce to score 20 fantasy points. So you, you so shoot it, for the upside. Yeah, I mean, I I just I can't figure out a way that A Chan scores less than Damian Pierce either. What yeah. about Brees Hall? Against Kansas City. Yeah, I'm going to play Damian Pierce in that situation. Dude, thus far, the Steelers have given up a lot of points to running backs, and uh, they're at home, and, and I, Brees Hall has a floor of zero. It's, it's okay. been a disaster. Final. Uh, no, 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 Jay. You. Ah, <laughs> I'm starting Brees, baby. You know it. Okay. Um, right. <laughs> I did try to get out of that. I did I did try to pivot yeah, away. You didn't want to be yeah, on the was, record. That was sneaky. <laughs> um, but what about the both? running backs on the other side uh because oh, the the Houston Texans are a terrible run D so this is a week where you know you've been you've been very frustrated with Najee Najee has just been terrible um obviously you're going to start him when you're getting the opportunities he's getting in this matchup favorite like Najee you should start and I I presume you would start him over Damian Pierce correct you probably should, but I mean, you look at the numbers for Najee. I mean, four fantasy points, four fantasy points, six fantasy points. I yes. mean, that is oh, it's, that's what I that's, said. Putrid. That's, you should because it's more likely that he scores a touchdown in this game than I think Pierce does. But yeah, I mean, Pierce is five fantasy points, four fantasy points, fell into the end zone and was okay. Yeah, it's. I mean, look, that's. But that's, the question is, Jalen Warren. I think you can flex him. But would you play Jalen Warren or Damian Pierce? This is I'd play Damian I'd, Pierce. I'd play Pierce. Okay. Uh the offensive side for Pittsburgh also includes a couple of, you know, at least one wide receiver dart throw every week. George Pickens, sixteen targets. I think he can be in your lineup. The Muth got loose, scored a touchdown. You're gonna play him. On the other side, it's been the uh, you know, Nico Collins had the big week, hundred and forty nine yards. Tank Dell's had a couple of big weeks. Uh you know, both of those players are flex worthy consideration type of guys. I, I'm not putting Tank Dell in a must start category yet. No, no. You you still need to grow and, and see it. And I I don't mean that as in like get taller. He is that would be small, helpful too but though. It, it would be. Uh he is not the big guy. Nico's the big guy. I think the real question is if you you know, who do you prefer between Nico and Tank Dell? To me, I, I'm I have made that transition. Not to where Tank Dell is a must start. You've got to have him in your lineup, but he is uh, ahead of Nico to me. If I had both guys, I'd be starting Tank. Yeah, it's close. If you just want to follow who performed last week, I mean that wouldn't have gotten you anywhere on the transitional week of right. of Nico to Dell. So, part of me for some reason prefers the uh, bigger physical guy in this matchup. I, I mean, so it, I kind of lean that direction, but I think both are in play. Sure. I also think that the Pittsburgh Steelers DST will be having a good time without Larry Tunsil there. The Las Vegas Raiders, the Los Angeles Chargers, we'll jump into that matchup next. All right, we're talking Raiders and Chargers. Raiders and Chargers are both one and two. The DraftKings Sportsbook line has the Chargers as five and a half point home favorites. The over-under is 48 and a half. Feels like we're talking about these kind of games with the Chargers every week. Yeah, it's a delight. It is an <laughs> absolute delight what the Chargers are doing because their offense, it's it's doing enough, is scoring a lot of points. Their defense is making sure that they Need find to ways to lose games. Need to score a lot of points. Yeah. Yeah, and, and you do have, um, you know, Mike Williams out for the year. ACL tear. And so fantasy players are looking for the – Who's going to step up situation? I do not believe, you know, that Keenan Allen's getting 20 targets a week. No. I don't think that's going to be 
feasible, and they're going to have to turn to other options. Yeah, I would agree. Uh, the other options right now, week one, it's probably going to be uh, Palmer as the player that will receive the most targets, snaps in in replacement of Mike Williams. But they have come out and said Quentin Johnston is going to see more action, which obviously like, he yeah. better. He's your first round pick, and your uh, one of your two star wide receivers went down. If if not now, when? Yeah, they the, the language around it was that he's going to get opportunities on the fifty fifty balls that Mike Williams would have had the chance to go up and get. So you're talking big play potential with Quentin Johnston. You're talking probably more PPR value with Joshua Palmer. In week one, if I had both, I'd be playing Palmer. I feel like that's safer, more, yeah, more routes run. and um, You're probably going to see maybe a little spillover into the tight end position. Yep. Gerald Everett and Donald Parham, it's it's kind of hard to pick one of those guys. Gerald Everett did miss practice with an illness. If you had to start one of those two, I guess I'm going to chase the touchdown with Parham. <sighs> it's really difficult because – he like Gerald Everett is the one who gets more targets. You know the two targets uh, each of the past few weeks for Parham. Meanwhile, Everett six and three. So, but if the it's it's hard to argue against a couple weeks uh, in a row or not in a row, but just a couple weeks that we've seen Parham being a go to read when the like in the red zone or inside the five zone. So I think I'd go Parham as well. What's happening in the backfield in Los Angeles, Jason? Why don't you give us the uh, intimate glance at the Austin Eckler, Joshua Kelly conundrum? Sure. Um, the the conundrum is answered very easily, which is if Austin Eckler is able to go right now. He uh, he's been practicing in a limited fashion. He's not able to cut and turn as well as he would like to be uh, doing right now, but he can run straight at full speed. Uh, if he is out there, you're obviously going to play him. He will be better than any alternative you're finding off of waivers or your bench. Later game. Uh, Joshua Kelly is really bad. <laughs> and the matchup is really good, but the matchup was very good last week. I think this is nothing more than a break glass in case of emergency situation. If Latavius you're the Murray or Josh Kelly? Um, I think think I lean Latavius Murray huge scoring game projected with the Dolphins and if you're chasing a touchdown I think it's more likely that Latavius Murray falls in an end zone what can you really do with the Eckler situation if he's the late game like it, what do you have a a gauge I mean you're trying to decide on your starts there's a lot of morning games um, are you just waiting until you know Saturday night and trying to make a judgment call then are you going to wait through game time yeah, I mean, th thankfully, it's you know, it's not necessarily the last game of the week. You've got, you've got a handful of other options that you could pivot to, but you do need to be aware that you know, look at what your other pivot options are, and look at the game time because if they, if they are before, um, if they're in the morning game, all your pivot options are in the morning, then you you're gonna have to start them if it is not announced yet whether Eckler will play. I I do expect that by Sunday morning. We will know whether Eckler's going to so be look, active or not. Looking through what the schedule is, uh, the afternoon games, Raiders, Chargers, look, I'm not playing Josh Kelly. Cardinals, 49ers, so maybe you have Connor. Uh, I think that the the pickup of just like the full, this is an emergency, I put every, I bet everything on Eckler, it might be the Pats-Cowboys game because there's, there's a chance that Zeke is on your waiver wire. He is not a good start this week but if you're gonna dowdle if you're gonna put all the wow would you play no, no i'd play i play Patriots. zeke i'd play zeke well I, i'm just saying who but might, yeah, yeah, who might be on your wire zeke, that's fair zeke probably on a lot of rosters too uh elijah mitchell could be uh, another yeah okay option. that's a good one too. elijah mitchell is one of the later slate games he got work last week and you could easily see the san francisco 49ers just having Mitchell iced the game in the fourth. Consolidation of options on the Raiders' side. Jacobs, Adams, Myers. It's beautiful. End of list. It's beautiful. All right, let's turn the page. New England, that game you just talked about, one and two, heading to Dallas to take on the two and one Dallas Cowboys. The DraftKings Sportsbook line here is Dallas minus six and a half. Oh, boy. 
Oh boy. Oh, Ooh, they're at home. Oh boy. They're <laughs> You've yeah. already given one. You I don't know. you don't I have know. to force it. I know. Well, look, I don't force anything. It is true. They they just come to him. <laughs> I, I this game I won't make it official. Okay. But don't be surprised. <laughs> Dallas is heavy favorites. They had a hugely disappointing performance last week. The Patriots, they're one and two. Uh, they're battling to stay in contention in a very difficult di- uh, division. You know, Dak right now is a—he's not a quarterback that I am actively trying to get into my lineup. You may be stuck. That's fair. You may be stuck, but I like—I've pivoted to Russell Wilson this week over Dak. I—I I don't like what I've seen from a game plan perspective. I don't think Dallas—they just don't always need it from Dak. So so there's this percentage of time that they don't need Dak because the running game and the defense is enough. Then there's a percentage of time where they do need Dak and he doesn't perform. Mm-hmm. Then there's a percentage of time where he, they need Dak and he does perform and you're happy you started him. But I look at it as a, you know, it's, uh, it's one of the three. It's, it's one, one third, third of, the time. of the time. So that puts me into hesitation. And, and looking for a little bit more guaranteed production and, and ceiling. Dak so far has not been better than the quarterback 17 on the on the on on any given week this season. The Patriots' defense has looked outstanding. This is not the week to play Dak. I mean, there are plenty of options on the waivers I would play over Dak. The Patriots are giving up just 10 points per game to opposing fantasy quarterbacks. And, yeah, I mean, Daniel Jones ran wild and scored a ton of points on Arizona – and Dak couldn't do that in the second half. Tony Pollard, he's been outstanding. Mike and I were talking about the running back room or the running back landscape and how, like, there's Christian McCaffrey, and then we're like, okay, who's really next on that tier of who you would trade um, some of the higher-performing Mostert's for, right? Like, mm-hmm. Mostert's number one right now, so who would you go get? Well, it's like McCaffrey's there, and then the next name up was really Tony Pollard to us. Uh, Not Eckler just because of the injury? Yeah, not Eckler just because of the injury right now. I mean, well, yeah, we were looking at guys who have per- actually are performing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like Eckler is certainly, yeah. Now that you bring it up, it's a good consideration, but we don't know. You know, Randry's a risk with an ankle, and he may not be back out on the field. But Tony Pollard's been outstanding. Um, he leads all running backs and carries inside the ten. I hate watching my running back run off the field in those situations. C.D. Lamb's been good. Those two players are in your lineup. What about Jake Ferguson this week? The Patriots shut down the tight end position. At least they have this year. He's, yeah, the, uh, Jake, I mean, this is a matchup play. What Jake about those uh, options with the Chargers? Yeah, I think I would rather go with the Chargers in a high over-under. This this game, mm-hmm. look, you've got two great defenses here. The Cowboys have a great defense. Patriots have a good defense. I'm not expecting a ton of passing volume from either team. I'm not looking to uh, smoosh Hunter Henry in my lineup or Jake Ferguson in my lineup, if you're not a superstar, if you're not C.D. Lamb, I, I think C.D. Lamb's the only pass catcher I want on both sides of the ball here. I'd yeah, go, I I'd, wouldn't start any of the wideouts in New England. I'd go Ferguson over the Chargers, guys. I'll just take the targets. Ramondre Stevenson's the RB16 on the year. Ramondre is thus far what? Is he a disappointment? Is he neutral? Is he? Uh... I think he's pretty neutral. Yeah. Last week he was disappointing, and and really, um... well, week one he was too, right? No, no he was no. RB nineteen. Yeah, he wasn't. He wasn't bad. Twelve for twenty five, but six for sixty four through the air. Like, yeah, I just remember people talking about it. He's been a, a he's been a poor rusher this year. I mean, I'll, we're at two point nine yards per carry uh, through the first three weeks, but he is he's a great pass catcher, and he's out there. For the majority of the time, even last week, uh, Zeke had like a Zeke had a big rushing day uh, against the New York Jets, but it was also a lot of that came towards the end of the game when they were just trying to do ball control. So I expect Ramondre is still the guy. He's a seventy three percent snap type of a player who catches passes, should see goal line opportunities. So he's he's still in for me despite the I've, nasty matchup. You hope he catches passes in this game because it yes. feels like a low ceiling game if he doesn't. Uh, just for perspective, Ramondre on the season is averaging uh, 10.7 fantasy points per game through three weeks. Yeah, I, I, I would say that um, I am 100% confident that Ramondre Stevenson has a great season. What I have seen from him and his utilization in the offense really makes me – like I would love to have Ramondre. I would trade for Ramondre. That being said, you're going to have, I think, two bad weeks here. 
you, th- this is the Cowboys where I think you're right. It's just the ceiling doesn't seem very high in this matchup. You're still starting them this week. Next week, I expect a bad game against the Saints. The Saints' run defense is awesome. Their overall defense is awesome. But after that, his schedule gets open and nice, and I want Ramondre on my rosters. The Cardinals are 1-2 and two, going to San Francisco to take on the San Francisco 49ers, 3-0. and oh. DraftKings Sportsbook line, San Francisco minus 14. The over-under is 44. That gives the Cardinals uh, an implied point total of 15. The 49ers almost at 30. Uh, we, we're staring down this game, and now we, now we see Hollywood Brown has been added to the injury report with a thumb injury. Seems to have happened at practice. Keontae Ingram, backup running back, is also on the injury report and could be a game-time decision. I actually – I was going to bring up Rondale Moore as a yeah, – like if you're, I, if you're flexing Josh Kelly, if you're flexing a low-ceiling option, they've already come out and said that Rondale Moore is going to start taking snaps in the backfield. If Keontae Ingram is out – they're going all the snaps where Connor's not on the field could potentially go to Rondale Moore mm-hmm, in the yes. backfield and he'll be running routes and the game script says hey maybe you see a little bit more of it you talk about a sneaky yeah potential option something to pay attention to break glass type of situation yeah, I mean, I mean he had could, 54 rushing yards and a rushing touchdown last week with that breakaway run uh, you give him enough opportunities just to touch the ball because he's such a speedy guy he could break something off. Uh, what are you doing? With, I mean, James Conner, you guys have talked about it a little bit. Perspective on this matchup where they only have an implied point total of 15? It just doesn't matter. They have yeah. an implied point total of 15 every week. I mean, you don't expect the Cardinals to hit 20 most weeks, regardless of the matchup. Uh, James Conner, uh, we talked about it. He went, uh, I think, in a stretch of 10 games where he lost nine of them. He was never outside of the top 24 at the running back position. He's matchup proof. Uh, you don't expect a big game here, but he, he, didn't you know, expect you have, one last week. You have to start him. Every week you have to start him. On the other side of the ball, are we? Are you guys currently expecting no Debo? He has not practiced all week. Yeah, I am currently expecting no Debo, and I am currently expecting a somewhat banged up Brandon Ayuk. You definitely can still start him. Uh, I'm going to hold my breath while that happens. And really, George Kittle should be the primary benefactor here. The Cardinals have just never been good at guarding the tight end. And, you know, game scripts are Shanahan's thing. If he knows he doesn't have Debo and he's got to hurt Ayuk, he's just going to write up a couple of plays where it's like, hey, I'm just going to force feed the ball to Kittle over and over where they can't stop him. And it it's going to work. All right. Um, makes sense. This game, you know, McCaffrey, he's in there. Mike, your start of the week was Brock Purdy yesterday. Mm -hmm. Brandon Ayuk will be back. I expect him to have success. Elijah Mitchell, that desperate kind of mop-up role, if the game plan goes that direction. I mean, the Cardinals, at least in the game line, received no reward for their defeat of the Cowboys. You would start Rondell Moore over Elijah Mitchell in the flex? Probably for ceiling, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, it, you could go, you could get goosed pretty good on Rondell Moore. You could, you could definitely be surprised there. They they it, may not have success. It was it was fourteen opportunities last week for Elijah Mitchell. Really? Yeah, I knew he was involved. I, uh, that oh, number I surprises me. I I did oh, not he kept, realize he kept it was stealing 14. my sweet sweet CMC yeah. snaps. Yeah, you're never surprised because you yeah, just I watch. see every one of them. <laughs> Man. <laughs> All right. Um, Kansas City two and one Sunday night football Jets is this the end I mean uh, prime time Zach Wilson are we ready for this Have you planned your meal times appropriately Yeah I'll have my popcorn out um, I'll have the binoculars because I want I need the Pepto if you're a I, Jets fan I, I'm going to be watching this on TV with binoculars I want to see <laughs> Zach Wilson's face Did I I saw a report yesterday. That Zach Wilson is trying to win over his teammates. And to do so, he purchased ice cream for everybody. Oh my Look, gosh. I mean, that's that's a great start. Wait a minute. That's, that is a, Wait a minute. Also, is, Hold that, up. is that a real report? It is a real report. He, what kind of ice cream? Oh no, like, that I don't know. Did the, are we talking like he went to the to the grocery store and got some dryers, or did we did we pony up? I don't know if he's I don't the, know if this is Hog and Dawes. I don't know what we got. Ponied up for ice cream? I mean, come on. They're like, 
quarterbacks are getting their their you know their teammates insane gifts. It's like I'm going to win them over. I'm going to get them something they yeah, shouldn't but, be but, eating right now. But to that's help like us the win offense. Games. The, the quarterback or the running back, they like they they'll juice up the offensive line. If you if you're buying for everyone in the building, I mean that's a, that's a hefty bill. You know how expensive ice cream is these days. <laughs> so Mike, you're in on the uh, on the on the move. I'm I'm in on the sentiment of it. But it will do jack squat <laughs> if if you don't perform on the field after the. I mean, think of all the Jets players who were on this roster last year, busting their butts, doing everything they can to win football games, only to watch their offense be inept. And when they l would lose, the reason was because the offense couldn't keep par with the defense. It's happening again. It's it's unfortunate, but you. Yeah. They, the, the fact that this is on prime time, I, th I I don't know if that's what you were inferring. Yes. Of like, is this the end? Like, yes. Could end, this be the end? The of nation the, will be watching this game. The tweets will be flowing through to every non Zach yes. Wilson player on the Jets after this week if it's a disaster. And this is and not it will be. This is not hidden in a nine game morning schedule. This is no. everyone will be watching it. If Zach Wilson falls on his face, is probably the the move will happen. Brees Hall and Dalvin Cook will be the running backs for the Jets in this game. The Chiefs are giving up 12 points a game to running backs. I think they are – I would be trying everything in my power to not play either one of them because this reminds me of like – you remember when the Cleveland Browns came out and Isaiah Crowell was getting offseason hype and it was like, yeah. we're going to be a running football team. You don't get to be one. Not against the Chiefs. If you're down 17-0 to zero in the first six minutes of the game because Mahomes scored – and then your defense scored, and then you, they kicked the field goal. Do you think that they can just run Brees Hall every play and just – it's not going to happen. All right, I'll give you some nasty names here then, just comparatively of, of over Brees Hall. I for, didn't know that the floor Andy. could be that low for Brees is my point. Would you play Brian Robinson against Philadelphia? Of course I would. Against Philadelphia? Of course okay. I would. Yeah. Okay, but, let's go down the list. Would you play uh, – Roshan Johnson against Denver. Yes. No. Ooh, no, I man. wouldn't. No, okay. I wouldn't. All right. I, wouldn't. All right. All right. I, wouldn't. I went too far. But, but listen. But Bre Khalil Herbert, you would play above Brees? Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Oh, man. Look, Brees Hall has scored. This stinks. Brees Hall has scored. This stinks, guys. 4.1 fantasy points in the last two games. Oh. That's combined. Not oh. each game. Now. Your can, floor is can I zero. Interest, can I interest you? <laughs> In a halftime switch to Trevor Simeon. He's going to be inactive this week. Oh, daggummit. You could. Have. I would I would be very I think you, interested. You, can do, you could do halftime Tim Boyle. Still an upgrade. Boyle rules. <laughs> if I was trying oh, to man. make my mark, a la Mike White, and get a contract, the best depth chart to be on is the Jets. Oh, for because sure. Because you start to yeah, look. It is you were the garbage. And then you put the garbage by stinkier garbage. You look like you're, I don't know, special. <laughs> I honestly, I, I like not any garbage, not a joke. I really believe this offense would be better if they were running a purely wildcat offense. Oh, you could be right. Like the old school Miami, uh, <laughs> the, the, Ronnie, yes. uh, who was it? Ronnie, oh, Brown. Ronnie Brown. Ronnie Brown. Ronnie Brown. Yeah. Yeah. That it, was that when Ricky Williams was there too? Was that no, a year he was no. active? Yeah, who knows? He might have been. Anyway, you're right, Jason. It probably would be better. Let Brees Hall play quarterback. <laughs> so, it just feels like piling on. So, okay, but it's yeah, just yeah, the we, reality. yeah. Let's. So Garrett Wilson. You know, he had he he had his highest targets last week in this offense. He had nine targets. Uh, I think Garrett Wilson is a flex. I think he will be fine due to game script. Uh, Look at what Ro uh, Dobbs did last night. A flex, I would agree with. There, he is too talented of a player to say that you have to bench someone like that. You don't ever have to bench Garrett Wilson. He can make special things happen. You absolutely can bench him if you have other good options. Uh, you know, I, I brought it up. Um, you know, in my Megalobol roster, I, I started four other wide receivers over Garrett Wilson last week. It worked out great. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd be benching him if I had Debo this week. I don't think I'm going to have him, so I'm going to get backed into Garrett Wilson. This is not a great matchup. The Chiefs' defense has just looked really, really solid all year, and and it makes sense when you talk about the running backs that you know, oh, you get down, you you can't run, you've got to throw against them. But teams haven't been throwing against them very successfully either. Um, 
you know, and and now they've got Chris Jones back to just terrorize the the quarterback. So this is, I would prefer to not start Garrett Wilson this week. Nine point road favorites, Kansas City in a forty one point over under, puts the Jets at sixteen points. Chiefs at twenty five. Mahomes is in. Pacheco highlighting eight red zone opportunities last week. That was tied with Pollard and Achan for the second most of the week. Nice to see. Yep. Um, it's being pointed out that his snaps were low, but that's not relative to the Mahomes snaps. He played a career or a season high percentage when Mahomes was in the game. They blew out. Um, it was the Bears, right? Forty to nothing or whatever it was. So they they blew out the Bears, and while Mahomes was in the game, Pacheco actually had his highest snap share of the, of the season. Uh, Wide receiver wise, Tony's been banged up. Sky Moore, Rashi Rice. If I if I was shooting a dart, I'd be shooting it with R Rashi Rice. Yeah, I, I I would agree. I don't think you need to shoot a dart here. There's a lot of other <laughs> um, players. If if the Jets can't score, which they can't, then you don't. You, it's one of those things, kind of like what we saw with the Lions, where it's like, well, you hope it comes in the first half, and I'm not hoping for a good first half of a dart throw from a wide receiver room. I I'm, I lean with you guys of Rice is who I'd prefer. But, dude, just want to point out, for the Sky people, Sky Moore's target share has increased every single week. We you know we've started. So in there's the, Sky people and there's Rice people. Yes. So, okay. I mean, we were at the – I'm in the Rice fields. In the, the dumpster of the 8% week one went to 10. Then we had 16%. I mean, and a 16% target share, well, high. I mean, factoring in the fact that Mahomes played like 70% of the game – Maybe there's hope, but it's very minimal. I, it's funny because if Rice had been able to run one extra yard two times, right, yeah, he yeah, would have yeah. been the headliner yes. potentially in the wide receiver room on the waiver day. Yeah, Those are things to pay attention to. 35% of the wide receiver targets are there. Travis Kelsey, uh, it's been reported that Taylor Swift will be in attendance. So and then you so then you play him. You, that's the only reason. Right. Well, Taylor Swift's going to be there, so I'm going to be willing to the play games, Kelsey. The game's actually sold out because the Swifties want to be near. Did you know that? They want to be near, nearby. Is it like you the, don't think it's because the Chiefs are coming to town? <laughs> this is what I've heard. Okay. Because it's, it's a football game? <laughs> also, I've been told that, that this is really important. It this is whole pretty important. The, the relationship yeah. thing. It you, is, it is pretty important. Do you find important. it pretty important? Look, I will say this. I'm driving my kids to school, you know, this last Monday, and it was like, did you hear about the football game? I was like, about Kelsey? I was like. You know, my kids aren't the ones that are usually talking to me about football, and it was because of Taylor. Did Swift. you have you seen this thing going around on social media where the the women are videotaping the men in their lives and saying, "Hey, did you hear that? You know, she's going to really help Travis Kelsey with his career." <laughs> <laughs> like Taylor Swift, you know, they're, they're going to be dating and he, she's really going to help him out, get him some notoriety. And then the men are going, what are you talking about? He's a two-time I mean, Super Bowl champion. Uh, yeah, but the didn't, what, it was, what was the number on the jersey? Wait, Kyle, uh -huh. your wife tried to do that to you? She tried to get me. Uh -huh. and she, she did the me. same thing? Oh, she got me good. Did, on mean, video? Yeah. Oh, uh, I got to see that. Let's share but that. They reported that the... the his jersey sales went up like 400%. Yeah, his podcast downloads yeah. skyrocketed. Yeah he, yeah, he knocked us out of number one. Taylor Swift, you're ruining our lives over here. Sometimes I wonder if these relationships... Taylor Swift is hurting our podcast. She is. I just wonder if these relationships... Like, it's a good business deal for both. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. they should just be walking... Like, every celebrity, if they're single, should walk around with another single well, celebrity they, they so that to, they can just shoot their... I mean, it's a cro it's cross-promotion. They used to do that. Like in the golden age of Hollywood, they would just they would set. Oh, it was just token. Yeah, they would set people up to have. We don't a have enough single people relationship. Here. We could really be cross promoting, <laughs> building this Someone show up. Get a divorce for the team. Goodness gracious, bunch of married folk. Now, all right. To, to be that fair, all right. Oh if no, you no. cross promote the married folk, might even get more exposure. Well, Jason, fair. we're come on. All right, it's you're a, up, Jay. It's a family show. <laughs> Uh, the Seattle Seahawks, Monday night football game, taking on the New York Giants, prime time, Daniel Jones. The DK Sportsbook line, Seattle minus one in New York. The over-under is 47. But I think New York wins this ball game. Okay. The line surprises me. The line opened with the Giants favored. Oh, there it you go. It has been bet to the Seahawks being okay. favored now. Makes sense. 
Yeah, I mean, uh, this is this is a true pick 'em game. I mean, we've seen some real bad play from the New York Giants, and I could see this game going either way. Um, and so let's make a call on Saquon Barkley because it's a Monday Night Football game. It's a high risk situation. If you didn't spend, if you have Saquon and you didn't get Brita, you've got to make a judgment call here. Charbonnet's probably not out there. He would be a pivot option. You could you could pivot to Brightwell. Because of his involvement, like if you wanted to run it up to the line, I I know Mike and I we talked in the studio yesterday. We both think Saquon's going to play this week. Yeah, mm, I do not. Uh, he's been he's been back at practice. He's practicing again today. I think he'll be out there with the extra time. Jason does not think he'll be back out there. So so, how much risk do you want to take on? Because it's running back, man. I want some ceiling. It would feel pretty bad going into Monday being down eight points and then Barkley's out and you have to roll Brightwell out with <laughs> where it turns your I mean while you there'll be a running back on your bench who has those eight points so there it's just is risk tolerance yeah I mean there there are a lot of waivers that have Brightwell and that have Charbonnet um sitting there and maybe even Brita if people think Saquon's coming back I mean there are three kind of backup running backs yeah. in this game that you can go and look at and p you pick them up now any one of them, and wait on Saquon if you, you know, but... Or you could even, if we don't know, like, hopefully we know beforehand, like, well yeah, beforehand. Yeah, yeah. But it, even if you don't, you could go into the, the Sunday night game waiting for information mm -hmm. and yeah, pick up, you know, McKinnon um, or, or somebody like that, even Dalvin Cook. So, the Giants, uh, do we know where to go at the wide receiver position? Is there really anybody it's, there that you can, you know, I'm no. watching Wandale? Yeah, that's, that's what I was going to bring up is it's you're still not starting anybody from the wide receiver crew, which is really unfortunate because the Seahawks are currently 31st against fantasy wide receivers. I mean, I guess Hodgins. I mean, if you're starting someone who's actually active, but uh, we didn't have, we did not highlight him on the waiver show, but Wandale Robinson is like our league of record. I picked him up. I want to see what's going to happen this weekend. He only I mean, he had a whole bunch of targets on his routes, but I think he had like six or seven routes or something as he returns from his ACL. But he, no one has separated themselves from this wide receiver pack. So if Wandale continues to get healthy, there's a chance that it ends up being him over the course of the season. On the other side of the ball, Jackson Smith and Jigba has been super disappointing. Um, I don't really see a world where I'm wanting to wait and then play him on Monday night. If you're not going to play him this week, they've got the bye week next week. I've been really struggling with, you know. Oh, whether is, you would even drop him? What, yeah, whether he should be replaced with other players. I mean, this is a super, super talented wide receiver. I'm holding. Who will have his breakout at some point, for sure. Like, I, I, I don't have doubts yet uh, be, uh, of JSN. It's just a matter of when. And when might be much, much later than we want. It might be next season. Uh, because you you do have a situation here where he is unnecessary. They, they just don't, you know, if they've got Metcalf, if they've got Lockett, they're winning games, they can have him come along slowly, and he can play well and be irrelevant for fantasy. So, you know, it it is really tough. You, you figure you're not going to start him today, and even if he has a good game, and then they have the bye week, and then they come back, you're not going to start him against the Bengals. So, yeah, and, I mean, and roster I have, spots are worth a lot. I have continued to hold him. I have not yet dropped him. I did make a waiver claim that had him as a drop, and then someone got injured, and I was happy to undo it. I think I think people need permission to be able to move on from JSN because you might, you know, if if you're Saquon manager and you're hoping he comes back and you need to pick up uh, Charbonnet who's on the waivers, I would drop. I would drop JSN for Charbonnet. Well, and if Rashi Rice was out there, you'd rather have Rashi Rice? Yes, I would. So, I mean, there are situations where you got to make that call. Uh, Kenneth Walker, play him. Charbonnet, keep your eyes on him. DK Metcalf didn't practice due to ribs on Thursday. But that's – Thursday is – Their Wednesday. The Wednesday. Uh, Lockett you would play. And, uh, you know, Gino, it's been – it's been okay. Yeah, that's fair. It's been okay. But also – probably trying to find somebody else to play. Um, Daniel Jones on the other side, Mike has him, as, or Jason has him as a start of the week because Seattle's been so inept against quarterbacks. 
Yep. It, it is nasty. Andy Dalton just had himself a fine uh, game against the Seahawks, and while we don't know who to start, Wandale Robinson or Sterling Shepard or Darius Slayton or uh, Jalen Hyatt. Somebody will Someone, help Daniel so, Jones. Yes. Uh, I, I think that one of those wide receivers has a really good game, Has gets loose for a long time touchdown i think daniel jones is going to run the ball so i i think he's a fine start i would certainly start him over gino couple of updates before we get into the fantasy face-off uh Devontae smith practiced on friday after dealing with the illness zay jones was ruled out we talked about it yesterday bryce young's going to start miles sanders is questionable and then this situation seems to be progressing in a bad way for deshaun watson uh, he barely threw this week. He's listed as questionable. They are hopeful he'll play. Mm. If he does not play, I just want to throw it out there. Dorian Thompson-Robinson mm. out of UCLA. He's not bad. Rush for over 600 yards a year in college. He's actually a pretty good player. Um, he could be, a, a, we'll call it a dirty stream, if Watson was, <laughs> was going to miss. Uh, not on a lot of people's radar, and I'm not saying you have to do it, but um, – you know what? Jared Goff scored 15 last if night. If Watson so. yeah. gets ruled out, and you had Dak Prescott, yeah, I'd play Dak. Okay, I'm not. I'm not willing to go to the. You know, it's the Baltimore defense. It's a divisional game. Um, honestly, it would it would worry me a little bit just on the side of like if he makes some mistakes or short fields, the Browns defense could be worse. You'd like to see Watson out there. Uh, before we jump into the fantasy faceoff, I wanted to shout out one more reminder. We have the. Uh, First time ever discount that we are throwing out there for the DFS pass. You still got some days. Yeah, October 1st, that ends. You can go to DFSPass.com, use the code WINNER23, and we're giving you 20% off the DFS pass. It's a one-time fee for access to the DFS pass contents all the way through the NFL playoffs, including the premium Discord community, um, all of our projections, the, dra the DFS optimizer. This has been... Uh, a lot of you have responded to this offer and have been very excited to become a part of this I'm, team. I'm so happy with the people who have gotten to experience this. They've they've reached out. It, it is truly like I I know this is our our product. It is truly an unfathomable value in in this world because it's a, it's not a monthly fee and we're given a discount and the tools you get like we I use these tools for regular fantasy. Some of the articles for even if I don't play DFS, our props are are crushing. The tool for the lineup optimizer, I'm using it all the time. You can go and make 10 lineups really quickly. You just, you're just you like, I want this guy, this guy, and this guy. I'm going to lock them in place. Fill out my roster the best with other options. It's just a lot of great stuff. So use the code. Save some cash. It's winner23. That not the season, not winter. No. Winner like me this last week in the fantasy phase. That's right. And just real quick, the, the motto that we came up with when we made the DFS pass was DFS for the rest of us. It was not to me meant to be this, uh, you know, there's the sharky world out there. We wanted to create a community, tools, resources, and now we have the expertise with Matthew Betts, Kyle Borgannoni. Uh, we've got a lot of great writers inside of that DFS pass. So it has been the approach of let's give a great value. Mm -hmm. Let's build the product out in the right way. And so that's DFSPass.com. Let's move on. Fantasy Faceoff, presented by DraftKings. All right. Well, it was a it was a tight battle last week. I mean, we were all neck and neck. But Jason ends up on top, mm -hmm. um, taking it home. Number one, Mike. Number two again, and I ended up at the bottom. So I have the privilege, the mm -hmm. honor, uh, to reprise my role as the loser. Of this trifecta with the Wheel of Shame. Wheel of Shame. Well, here we go. And and when I'm watching this wheel, I'm always kind of rooting for a couple of things. I'm rooting, one, that I won't need a shower afterwards. Two, I'm, I'm rooting that I'll be able to see my lineup. Mm. Those are the two things I'm looking forward to the opportunity of doing. Let's spin that wheel. All right. Uh, is there a is there one that's like you get away, you don't have to do anything? Viking, uh, Happy Trees. Big Gordo. <laughs> what on Oh, what no. What on earth is Big yeah, Gordo? Yeah, uh, Big Gordo. Uh, yep, we're, we got a fat face coming on here. Uh, we've got Fat Andy is... 
uh, about to take hold on this show. You've got go. to be kidding me. Can you hear me? <laughs> yeah, we can hear you well enough. Oh, there you so go. I, I work at a, uh, a restaurant? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a shout out to a spitballer's oh, cool. reference as cool. well. Oh, I can hear you a little better now. Hey, everybody. <laughs> You're real happy. Yeah, he's a happy. You got that going for you. A happy fat guy. <laughs> it's already very hot in this body. <laughs> nice. Let's take our time. Well, why don't you guys kick it off at the quarterback position? <laughs> All right. At quarterback. Oh, my goodness. I did not pay up. I'm taking a little bit more risk on, but I think the value is there at 6700 to go with Anthony Richardson, uh, rookie quarterback. Run the ball, Anthony. Uh, I spent a little bit less for you than you did, Jason, and I'm taking on, I think, even more risk. Zach Wilson? sixty <laughs> At 6,500, taking on the Tennessee Titans uh, pass yeah. funnel defense. Yeah. Joseph Burrow. How yeah. much did you say? 6,500. Oh, well, that's my quarterback, too. Oh, oh you yeah. both have Joe Burrow. Burrow, baby. Okay. Oh, I, I will say this. I... I pivoted this morning off of Jamar Chase, which is a great value. And obviously, I know you're both going to have uh, Jamar Chase because you have well, maybe. Well, maybe we'll get we'll yeah. get there. Uh, I'll share my wide receivers. Since my, we're my glasses are fogging <laughs> for the first time yeah. ever. How's it feel? Because of this fat face. <laughs> Um, so let's talk wide receivers since we're about to stack with your quarterbacks. Okay. Um, my wide receivers, I paid up. I have Tyreek Hill, who I think I just want every single week in PPR, no matter the cost. He is expensive. And on the other side of that same game, I have Stefan. Oh, there's the, Andy, there's the, there's oh, the tongue, the tongue is out. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. This is worse because <laughs> this isn't a turkey. This is a man. <laughs> Oh, it's so bad. Gross. It's getting drooly. Gross. It's getting drooly. Oh. <laughs> Enjoy the YouTube, everyone. Oh, good luck. Okay, uh, you have Tyreek Hill and who else? And across the field, Stephon Diggs. I've got, wow. the, uh, I've got okay. the powerhouse there. And then uh, Adam Thielen, Andy Star of the Week at 4,500 is one of the cheap options that looks good in a full PPR. Okay. I do have Jamar Chase. You got me. Okay. I stacked him with Joe Burrow. Uh, then I got Tank Dell at home. The price is still very nice for a player that has has given us two incredible games at just forty six hundred. <laughs> and then I paid down. Uh, oh, this is incredible! At four thousand, I have Joshua Palmer so at home against the Las Vegas Raiders. He's only four thousand, right? Yeah. yeah. All right, gentlemen. I have Jamar Chase. Yeah, as you might expect. I also uh, I went with these little known options: Devontae Adams at eight thousand and Chris Olave at seventy one hundred. All right, very okay. nice. At running back, I am going with Josh Jacobs. I am expecting the bounce back to last year at seventy one hundred. And in order to make uh, Tyree Kill and Stephon Diggs work together, this is yeah. where. Oh boy! This is I know where who it is. I've got Khalil Herbert at forty seven hundred, ah, way down at the yeah, bottom. Yeah, I'll I'll jump in because I have Khalil Herbert as well. Okay, and I paired him with my start of the week, James Cook, in oh, the big that... matchup in Miami. How much is Cook? James Cook is sixty three hundred. Herbert was forty seven hundred. Okay, uh, I have Kyron Williams taking on the Colts. Let's see if we can continue to get every single opportunity for the Rams. He's at six thousand. And then I got Christian McCaffrey mm, there at, at ninety two hundred against the Arizona Cardinals. Uh, Elijah Mitchell, stop, stop taking my snaps. Uh, come on, Elijah Mitchell. Right, uh, your final three. Uh, my final three at tight end. I've got my guy, Dalton Kincaid, <laughs> baby. <laughs> Thirty two hundred. I think the value in a full wow. PPR in this game script is going to be outstanding. I love him this week. Uh, this Joshua guy. Palmer in my flex at four thousand. Okay. He's a great value, and the Panthers defense against Minnesota at home at twenty five hundred. I don't I, love that, but whatever. I have Jake Ferguson at thirty five hundred PPR. So hopefully we get four to five receptions there. My start of the week: Jacoby Myers at mm. at a nice. <laughs> 5,500, so I'm hoping for you know a back and forth so I can get Palmer and, and Myers some points. And then my defense, 
I got the Cleveland Browns at home at 2,800 taking on the Ravens. Who is your defense, Jason? Uh, I have the Carolina Panthers. All right. Um, I also have the Browns. Yeah. I also have Joshua Palmer as my flex. Yeah. And I went with Parham. I had to save Dude, some money. Donald Parham. Yeah, yeah. Donald he's Parham. like 2,800. I had Parham. 2,800 from the fat guy. This, I had I had Parham in, in a couple builds as well. This morning, I had the Cleveland Browns and Jamar Chase, the exact same as you two, and I switched to oh, glad you moved Carolina it. and Stephon Diggs. So we will see how that – I think that will be the win or loss for me. That was Fantasy Faceoff presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use promo code BALLERS to get $200 in free bets instantly when you place a $5 bet on any football game. That's code BALLERS only at DraftKings Sportsbook. <laughs> I'll close out the show. Hey, I'll, I'll see everybody on Sunday Live, ballerslive.com. If you want to join me an hour before kickoff, enjoy the weekend. Enjoy the football games, everybody. Goodbye. for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.